lately, I have realized that the time that I spend in nature is what brings me back to something much bigger than myself. And I'm going to ask you a question. It, it brings me to wonder. So here's a question for you. <laughs> Who said this? A shaman, a scientist, or an artist? Nature has the greatest imagination, but she guards her secrets jealously. Okay, I'm going to say it Shum? was a. I, I'm going to say it was a scientist. You're so right. <laughs> You're... Quiz a by Yo 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 Ma. Plus plus. plus. <laughs> okay, so what is Richard your message? Richard Feynman. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Well, Richard Feynman is, is, is the physicist yeah. that, that said that, and the message that that I'm trying to figure out for myself is: Are we part of nature, or are we separate from nature? Mm -hmm. And part of what I've found out so far is that. There are two groups of people that hold old knowledge and new knowledge. And I'm fascinated by what happens when they come together, mm -hmm. when we visit those natural spaces. And these peoples are indigenous folk, natives, and scientists. So I think that we know so much, we have such capacity, but in fact, so much of that capacity what is the purpose for it? You know, if it's for to, to advance humanity, that's one thing. But if we're talking about, as your last interviewee said, you know, there is a distinct erosion of trust in AI, mm -hmm. then let's go back further back to say, why are we living? What is our purpose to live, to care for, and what is our you know, job as individuals or as citizens or as family, community members uh, to ourselves as well as to the world around us. So if we find ourselves as part of nature, then we start to care for it the way that we try to care for ourselves. So let's give another beautiful example. We have um, cut uh, some of your performance in Kentucky which was just this past weekend. So let's see you there at the Mammoth Cave National Park. I mean, it's extraordinary. I mean, we're looking at this incredible picture. It's all dark, and you just got the lights over the music, and we can see the audience behind you. What you have said that that this is not transactional for you. You're making relationships. You're not going to end these relationships. You're going to pursue this and maybe go on to other places, Antarctica or, or, or wherever. But what what are you what what are you getting from the people who you encounter in in these outdoor natural well, environments? First of all, community building. Um, I, I think everybody that we talked to, um, Teddy Abrams, who's the conductor of Louisville Orchestra, you know, Devon Hines, the great singer, and uh, Zach Vinegar, the, the, the staging director, everybody, to the park rangers, to the citizens around, to the guides, said, oh my gosh, you must do this for 1,500 people standing around in three performances, you need to tell the story of those caves. Millions of years old, 5,000 years of history with people, from natives, indigenous people, to what it, its story is written in, right in there, but it takes a musical narrative to bring it into the heart and minds to the people who are listening. The War of 1812, all the ammunition, Jefferson said, would be available from the saltpeter dugout from that cave. It was the second largest uh, 
visitor uh, site in the United States in the 1800s after Niagara Falls. Wow. And 400 miles of caves. And so the descendants of both the owners of the land and of slaves, as well as seven generations of slaves, are the guides who are friends and leading the thousands of people who go into the caves every month. And, and it tells the story of our country's history, mm. but much more so. It goes way beyond. So that's one way of concretely using culture to show and to make us feel what a country's history is, but in relationship to our planet. Yeah. And I think, you know, to have that in concrete form, I think changes lives and gives us a different perspective. <laughs>